In this Star Wars Outlaws news update video, I will be sharing with you some brand new gameplay details that have just been confirmed and more. Before we do get into today's news though, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future news updates on Star Wars Outlaws. So, the people that got to play the game recently from Game Informer just dropped a new video interview with a couple of the developers on the game. They mostly talk about the reputation system, and this is a mechanic that is one of the more exciting parts of Outlaws that fans are looking forward to. They share quite a few examples and new info on how it works, which is great. Plus, they also detail how the Imperial Wanted system will work in the game with some brand new info. Let's now get into everything though, starting with the reputation system. So the developers say that the reputation system is the foundation of what the game has been built around. All features in the game one way or another are connected to the reputation system. Having built the entire game around the reputation system, they want to empower player choice as much as possible, but also at the same time still tell a good story. You can work for all four crime syndicates, but you won't just be committed to just one for your entire playthrough, because at the end of the day, K wants to live free and not join, and get stuck within a syndicate, similar to what Kira did with Crimson Dawn. However, the developers do want to make sure that you align with who you want as much as you can. You will gain allegiances with the syndicates that you choose to do so, and it can even become a friendship, but it will only be temporary if you do want to actually survive in the galaxy. You'll be using syndicates as they are also going to be using you for work. Fans have been wondering how the reputation system will impact the main story, if at all. We have known for quite some time now that everyone will get the main same story beats, as well as the same ending of the game. But there is some good news if you want some difference between playthroughs because there will actually be some impact based on the reputation system. A lot of the theme of the story is driven by who Kay is meeting in that very moment, and what makes sense in terms of the syndicates she is interacting with. There are story beats in the game where the reputation you gain or lose is flowing based on what the story is telling. So, the reputation system changes based on the main story beats, not just the side content stuff. How you approach any of the main problems in the story will change based on your reputation. An example they gave is if you have to steal something from the Pike Syndicate and you already have a bad reputation with them, they are going to be making it very difficult for you. But if you do have a good reputation with them, then you might just be able to walk into one of their territories and take the item. So gameplay is changed rather than the main story beats, but you'll still have a slightly different approach in the story compared to other players. According to the developers in the new interview, characters will also betray and double-cross you as it is the underworld and everyone is out for themselves. Sometimes you will also betray them as well, and an example of this was you could be contacted mid-job, so you could be working for the Pikes, and then as you are securing this job, the Ashiga clan contact you with a better reward and that could be more money or something like that. So you have to choose between more money or worse reputation because you betraying the Pike Syndicate will ultimately reduce that reputation. It is all completely up to you, and Kay is apparently quite bad as an outlaw because she's a rookie, so at times she will actually try and betray someone and it won't go very well. She's not going to be always winning. Apparently, big surprise moments of betrayal are tied to the main narrative, and betrayal is always part of the main story. Smaller jobs, you can betray them, but they won't betray you, so it isn't like you're constantly or randomly being screwed over often over small things. As for the main story, you will adapt, but things will happen and you have to deal with it if a character does betray you. You will also be able to pick up these things called contracts, and this is where you will assist syndicates in the open world to quickly boost reputation, so these contracts are going to be a very fast way to boost that reputation and contracts do vary on reputation as well. So, for example, if you have a terrible reputation, which is the lowest level of reputation with a syndicate, it's more of a hustle contract to get you out of a bad spot. So, you'll earn a lot of reputation, but hardly any money. 
Whereas if you have the top level of reputation with a crime syndicate, which is called excellent, then it's going to be a high risk, high reward job to do. You will be able to cash out a lot of money doing these high-end contracts, but also have the opportunity to work with different syndicates by, as I've mentioned before, them jumping in before you complete the job and betraying your employer of that job. So it's going to be very dynamic. You can make more money at the cost of a lot of reputation. On to stealing, because this is a big part of being an outlaw in Star Wars, isn't it? So you're actually going to be able to steal things from one of the districts owned by one of the factions. But you can't loot freely, even with, say, a good level of reputation. Because if you are caught stealing, then you'll lose that reputation and people will go after you. You have to have the excellent level of reputation to easily steal stuff without any issues. Also, at certain milestones that you reach with the reputation level, the syndicates will give you thank you gifts. And basically, these do vary in reward. The open world, no matter the planet, will react to you and your decisions. All of the people you meet will react differently based on your current reputation level, not just with the syndicates. If you are good with the syndicates, then they may actually even come and help you in the open world if you do get into a spot of bother. If it is bad, then they will become suspicious and even attack you. Also, if you enter an area with a bad reputation, it's going to be dangerous and you definitely don't want to be doing that. Speaking of these characters in certain districts, they may actually have small storylines attached to them, which are only available if you are at a good reputation level with certain syndicates as well. So the reputation system with the four syndicates don't just open up pathways with the four clans, but also NPCs that are just in the game world. The reputation system with the four syndicates also affect merchants that you can purchase items from. So if a merchant is affiliated with a syndicate, well, the prices of their goods will actually change depending on it. So if you have good rep, for example, you'll get a good discount. In contrast, a bad reputation means you'll have to pay more. The developers say that they have managed to find lots of little ways all over the game to show the reputation system off, to show its impact, the influence, and they've done this by working with all of the other departments in the game. If I had to guess what this is, this is definitely more like environmental storytelling. So, for example, potentially a settlement may look different if you have a bad reputation, things like that. I think that could be really cool and really change up the game. Now let's talk about the wanted system, which is similar to the reputation system, but it is different because it is all about the empire. So the Empire don't have anything to do with the reputation system, it's just this wanted system. Now, for the most part, the Empire will ignore you. You can just walk around and they won't do anything. But if they catch you doing something they don't like, which is basically messing with the Empire themselves, then you'll become wanted and more troops and more people will come after you and soon the world will be filled with Imperials looking for you. Now, the maximum level of Wanted is an event that will spawn in the world, and it's where Death Troopers will appear. If you defeat them, basically, this shuttle will arrive with Death Troopers, and they will come and hunt you down. If you actually are able to defeat these Death Troopers, then the Wanted level is cleared. They say one of the top challenges in the game is where you have Max Wanted level on the planet that you're on, so the Empire are absolutely everywhere looking for you. This starts as just troopers, but ATSTs will also be sent out to find you, and then the shuttle of death troopers coming to get you. Apparently, the worst case scenario in the game is if you are at max wanted level, and you're also being hunted down by the four crime syndicates. That's right, all four can put a bounty on your head. They will hire bounty hunters to come and hunt you down. The developers say, good luck getting out alive. It is possible, but it is going to take a lot of skill to get out of this five-way situation. They also note that you really have to go out of your way to annoy everyone at one time because of how the reputation system works. So it's going to be interesting to see how many people can actually pull that off early into the game. In other news, the game and Xbox, as we know, have a marketing agreement and they've actually teamed up for Design Lab Outlaws themed designs on controllers. On May 4th, the official Star Wars Outlaws Twitter account tweeted out this image and links to standard and elite controllers that you can purchase featuring a cover art inspired preset. So you have those oranges, those blues, Obviously, it's not 
totally Star Wars Outlaws themed. I would have liked something actually like, say, a print on the faceplate or something, or more of the light blue, but hey, you can actually customise it however you want all the different individual parts of the controller, just no actual artwork on official controllers yet. Hopefully they do happen in the future, but who knows. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video, so please do let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe so you don't miss any future news updates on this game. And if you did miss any of my previous videos, click on the playlist on screen right now. And I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.